Welcome to the Let It Bleed podcast, a place where you can hear the liquor-fueled ramblings of two narcissistic wizards who conjure the essence of inspirational people every week and bring it straight to you. And just how do you plan on doing that? Magic. Motherfucker. And now for the wizards themselves, David Amaya and Phil Arroyo. Oh, thank you, handsome announcer man. Yeah, I wonder who that guy is. That's nice. Yeah, yeah I feel like it's got like a real SNL intro to it. I dig it. I dig it. it. Right on, right on. Oh, man. So what's going on, Phil? Oh, well, I mean, to pick up on this conversation here that we were just having, uh, a whole lot is going on in the world right now. Uh, you didn't know that there's like a, a porn star that, yeah, that's nope. uh, the president paid like $130,000 to to keep quiet and then... They're just realizing now that like all the paperwork that they filed to like the the gag order, whatever the fuck you call it. Ew, I just said gag order thinking about the president. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> ultimately the new the new development this week is that uh, part of the uh, you know the legal papers were out, and in it they describe that there are compromising images of the president that she has in her possession. So. We are probably pretty close to getting a Donald Trump dick pic in the very near future. <laughs> and it's, and I just, I can't believe these are the times that we're living in. Yeah. It's. I gotta say, I'm not too surprised at all, like in any which way. That's the I'm saddest not, part about it, man. I don't know. Is This I, is like is the number it, three story right now. Yeah, but what can, what, why is it the saddest part that I'm not surprised that it's crazy like that? You know, it's it is what it is. Well, this the is that just, we're living in, and we know he's a piece of shit. We know this stuff's gonna come out. We've like, just all debased ourselves that this is our political kind of you know discourse right now. Is that we let this fucking monster in? And, well, I oh. think it's a, it's it's unprecedented in a lot of ways because of what technology provides, though, too, for the way that we have social networks, social media, which he's largely a part of. Oh well, yeah, well, we were attacked stuff. by a hostile foreign nation, and yeah. our you know democratic process was subverted. So yeah, that can only get done through. A giant cultural shift that we saw happen, which we now know is a coordinated fucking attack. Exactly. So it's going to just keep getting crazier and crazier all across the board, especially that, as long as you got people like him around, you know, it's just going to happen. Well, you know, and hopefully this is the uh, this is the Empire Strikes Back of our, you know, trilogy that is America. You know, this is where we're at our lowest, where we've been beaten down, where there's fucking bad guys all around the corner. And man, Return of the Jedi is coming up soon here. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's gonna release in November. Yeah, yeah, the midterm elections. I think is where we're actually gonna be able to, you know, get some real stuff done. And so, so I will not be shutting the fuck up about that as soon as we get a little bit closer. Who's who's gonna cut off his uh, or who's he gonna cut off their fucking hand? Well, clearly Trump is Java. Java. <laughs> uh, no, no denying that. Yeah. Um, and so let's see. But we actually do. If you if you're in Huntington Beach, where we are. We actually do have the opportunity to affect some change here in that our House representative of Huntington Beach, Dana Rohrabacher, is Trump's, you know, biggest fan, a giant sycophant. And, you know, he, he's been his he's been at his side the entire time here. And the, the demographics are changing, man. Even in this last election, it was this city was looking bluer than I'd ever seen it when I looked at the breakdowns afterwards. So, yeah, I'm, I'm daring to hope a little bit because I've been trying to get this guy out of office for 10 fucking years now yeah. and just nobody nobody cares man nobody yeah. cares enough to really get vested in like their this is local politics you know right like they're very like they they kind of know they have some kind of passing familiarity with the presidential race that happens every four years and then they just tune out for the rest of the time i'm like oh no but there's these people are actively fucking you especially in this city we have an opportunity to do something so so what, what what's the next plan of action for that you would uh suggest for people to go do like when's the next thing that they can actually do something about this guy that you're talking about well we can all vote in the primaries to kind of a, a elect a uh, a good challenger to this guy um at the moment uh there's this guy harley ruda who uh, he seems he seems like a pretty good guy to me. Um, it's still kind of anybody's race in the Democratic primary. And that vote, I don't have that actual date up here because we don't plan anything before we start talking. But <laughs> um, once that does come out there, I do want to like actually use this as a platform to launch a large scale, like get out the vote effort, because I think it's super important to you know, get involved with, uh, with local politics too, with the smaller scale stuff, because that directly affects everybody. And just nobody, 
has the time or patience to to read through it you know and it, it's so boring compared to the shit that's going on on the national level right you know of course I find myself like just getting so consumed with all that shit and then it trickles down and just, and just, it's distracting, you know, it It is, is, it's it's exhausting. Yeah. And so, I mean, here's hoping we can have a big shellacking, uh, in November this year and, and stop the, uh, the bleeding. Cause right now things are kind of running rampant with this tax bill and so many of these measures that are just getting rammed through because, you know, they've got a, uh, they've got a majority and the Democrats have, no what's the word balls they they do not fight them on that level they're terrible politicians you know and so they're just fucking running loose in the candy store that's a phrase right terrible politicians (laughs) oh they're all bad but there's some good ones out there and they're coming up and i will let you guys know who they are because i'd like to spread some positivity as well please do pretty pretty clear pretty evident about all the negative stuff out there yeah but speaking of positivity we had Christopher Rushman on the show this week. That is positively, uh, he was positively a great guest. Thank you for yeah. bridging that together because I had nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, speaking of positive, <laughs> hey, ooh, yeah. me out. That was good though. That was good. Thank you. You ever wonder about when you go to concerts and, you know, when certain shows sound a lot better than other shows, uh, you know, certain venues or certain bands that you've seen, you may have seen bands in different venues and one time they sounded like shit and another time they sounded great, vice versa, whatever. But you probably don't wonder about the person that's in charge of all of that. Yeah. And I think not enough people wonder that, you yeah. know, I think they just blame the entire thing lives and dies with the band. I'm right. Like, Oh no, there's so many people behind the scenes. Interesting, brilliant, beautiful people. Absolutely. And uh, we've got a guest on, a buddy of mine, Christopher Rushman, who um, I go way back with because we worked um, right next to each other in neighboring restaurants and, uh, you know, just just learned a lot about this guy. He's really intelligent. He understands um, sound, which is even for a musician like myself and, and a songwriter and stuff, that's the one area that I really just never, you know, that's where my brain just didn't work, like the whole sound and engineering, as you could tell, Phil, with yeah. the podcast stuff. Uh, technology and, and things of that nature are not really my strong suit. Well, yeah, so it's a whole other ball game. You yeah. know, I don't really have the, I mean, I can't play the guitar, you know, some of the, some of like the, the, you know, rhythmic, like chords and stuff like that. Like, I still don't, haven't really wrapped my head around that. But right. the technical part is they, they need each other. Yes, absolutely. But, they, but goddamn, you, you know? need all the pieces to the pie, and he is that piece of the pie, the unsung hero of the great concerts that you go to. Um, and he's been doing this on his own. He's got his own business. He's he's a hustler, uh, and I give credit to anybody who you know just discovered a passion and loved it so much that they just put all their hard work into it and figured out a way on their own. You know, not to say that it wasn't through studying or learning from the help of other people, but they figured out a way to make a business out of it, you know, and they're doing what they love. That's one of the the basis, the, the, the basic parts of this show is that we like to bring people on who are pursuing their passions, that are doing what they love. And, you know, they're making their life out of it. And and I respect anybody who's, you know, ready and willing to forge kind of their own path, you know, absolutely, because. I mean, nobody really sits down and tells you when you're a kid that you can be an audio engineer and like, this is how you do it. <laughs> yeah. And and with so many, you know, fields and jobs today, I feel like so many kids don't even know that things are jobs. Right. You know? And anybody who's able to step out of the comfort zone of just not choosing not to be one of the, you know, six career paths that yeah. you're really groomed for, you know, in, the ones that you're really not groomed for though. Yeah. Yeah. Ones, yeah. Like Quote, doctor, unquote, you're be a doctor for. really like, okay, it's not that to be a dick, but not every kid's going to go up to be a fucking doctor. Okay. Oh, I yeah. can never be a fucking doctor. Like I just don't have that kind of like care for any or pay attention to detail to anything. I'd be like the worst doctor ever. Oh, I'm way too selfish. Yeah. yeah I would, I love sleep and, <laughs> um, I, I don't like cooties. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that that I'm not cut out for that. And respect to anybody who actually, you know, can do that. But yeah, it's not for all of us. Mm-hmm. And for the rest of us, there's interesting stuff. And so it's always good to have somebody on here who's really kind of forged their own path. And we get to talk about that at uh, at some length. Right. And it's a beautiful science, to, you know, to, to sound engineering. It's like, I mean. Well, oh, yeah. Learning like learning, you know, the, the frequencies and the rates that things are at and like learning what actually scientifically what is music and right. what is I mean, sound, you know, mm-hmm. 
and to, to use all that knowledge to, to bring something together. Like, it took me a year to get somewhat okay studying this shit a lot just to get, you know, the podcast to, to what it is now. But this guy, he's, uh, he's got some pretty, pretty impressive stuff. And so if you guys do want to check him out, and I highly encourage that you do, if you have any kind of uh, events or, uh, you know, concerts, wedding, you know, you want, that, you want that marriage to last, you call Christopher Rushman. All right? And that's, <laughs> at, uh, that's at Hux Audio. That is H-U-X-X Audio, like it's spelled, A-U-D-I-O dot com. And, uh, of course, we'll be putting links to all of these things in the show notes and blast them out on, uh, on social media this week. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've been pretty, um, I've been pretty happy with uh, kind of the response that we've been getting from kind of this, you know, extra energy and renewed effort since we've, since we've been back. You know, we've had the, we had the Art in the Park episode up, and we've just been a lot more engaged on social media. And I'm seeing a lot of that love uh, being returned in the same way, too. So thank you to everybody for, yeah. uh, for uh, you know. Making us feel all warm and sad. And if you haven't already, obviously go. And if you haven't already, it's too late. Fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> You're going to die. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm coming for you. <laughs> oh, man. But no, if you haven't already, go and like us. Subscribe to the podcast. Share it. Tell your your, your kids, your husbands, your wives, your doctors. And, and Except Jerry. Don't, don't fucking tell Jerry. Tell your dealers. Don't tell Jerry about this show. Don't tell Jerry, though. Yeah, don't, do not tell Jerry. No. If you know Jerry, don't yeah, tell him. Both. Everybody else, though. Let them know. Fuck okay? Jerry. Don't yeah. tell Jerry. Fuck Jerry. Agreed. But let everybody else know. Um, also be tuned for into uh, the Let It Bleed. I, I am totally just farting it up right now, man, because it's a lot later you know, than when you know. Yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> so. I, my bad. I had this, uh, I had this uh, intro recording start a little bit later, and the both of us are kind of – we didn't have any gas to start with. and so. But here we are, and we have Art in the Park. Um, coming up, it was actually supposed to be this weekend um, on Sunday, but we are going to push it back because it's going to rain, and nobody really, even though we do need rain, really wants to, you know, be out in the park trying to do paintings and stuff. When it's yeah, raining. I'm gonna pass on that one. So we're gonna move it back to the last Sunday. It's gonna be the 25th, and also that same evening there will be um, a base waffles event thrown by Puzzy, uh, Fuzzy Puddles. Oh my you goodness. You are just dyslexic today. Dyslexic I love it. Dyslexic and just it's stuttering adorable. and all over the place. But Fuzzy Puddles. Adult onset dyslexia. Yeah. Our good friends at Fuzzy Puddles uh, do this really awesome event once uh, the last Sunday of every month. And it's called Bass Waffles. You mm-hmm. basically go listen to bass music and basically. eat, basically listen to bass music and eat waffles. So, it's the shit, man. It's, Actually, I've been loving some of the promotions that they've, they've been doing too. Yeah. Some yeah. Good stuff. Like, they had a. Hit, uh, they had our buddy uh, uh, Jordan up there doing a, a pancake. The pancakes, yeah, yeah that, that was awesome. <laughs> that was hilarious. Oh, that fucking killed me, man. I, I I love that everybody's like kind of getting into this, you know. Yeah, and so come to Art in the Park, and then we'll hop on over to LA and do that at night, and it'll be a day full of art, music, love. I feel like you guys and should like all just like take a food truck yeah. up there as a group. Yeah, and just go to Base Waffles. That would be fucking dope. And hey, speaking of that weekend, actually, I actually wanted to. Uh, Help my uh, my younger brother out with something. Now, see, he's an actor at the Huntington Beach Academy of the Performing Arts, mm. and they have a uh, they have their spring show coming up, which is usually their big one. Uh, last year, it was uh, the producers, mm-hmm. and it was the most incredible live theater I've ever seen in my life. And I've seen a lot of like professional stuff too, and and younger stuff, but this was this was amazing. And so this takes place at Huntington Beach High School, and this year we've got Young Frankenstein. So we're back doing some more Mel Brooks, and um. I mean, it's going to be great. I'm really excited about it. And so I thought I would just uh, help them spread the word. And so if, uh, if you guys are available, there's, uh, I think, six, or no, I think there's 10 shows over two weekends. So there's uh, March 16th, 17th, and 18th. That's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And uh, the following weekend, again, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that's the 23rd, the 24th, and the 25th. And if you guys uh, want to learn some more, go ahead and check out hbappa.org slash C, where you guys can get tickets and all that. I will definitely be there and it's going to be a lot of fun. Sounds like it's really cool. So your brother, um, it's cool to see that your brother's doing some, some pretty big things over there. In the yeah, no, he's, he's game. doing really well. Now he's a, now he's a, he's a junior. Oh God, is he junior? Yeah, he's a junior now. Oh, I should know. I'm a shitty brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, yeah, no, he's actually uh, getting some stuff. And, and he told me that they reprised his role from the last one because he was a flamboyant, like they dressed him up almost like a poo from Aladdin. Hmm. And he's like this flamboyant uh, house boy who like was delivering stuff to the to the gay director, oh. and so yeah. Uh, I mean, spoiler alert, but apparently his ca- that character makes a comeback okay. in this somehow. So I'm 
I'm excited to look it up. I love the movie, and yeah, this is gonna be a good show. Awesome. Um, yeah. So I think that just that, about covers it. Just let's get right into it with Christopher Rushman. We hope you enjoy the show, and as always, let it bleed. Cue the music. It was like the third, um, the third, third place winner's prize was this, um, was a sign. First place winner was, um, well, it was her. She won first place. Uh huh. So, uh, I think uh, from what I'm trying to like converge the two stories of like the bar side and then her side. And I think what happened was, is like they weren't, (laughs) they weren't instantly, or they were there for the show. And then, um, uh, and then the people didn't seem to wa- they didn't take it home and so then they were uh, so then they were like oh well may- may- they just didn't want it so then they took it over to like a different side of the bar and then they left with it what was it? it was just like a sign I have actually no idea what this is actually on the sign okay but you know it was uh, and so she's like well fuck it they left it I'm gonna take it yeah okay so then she took it so then I was actually there when she got 86 the owner I don't have you ever met Paul? no I haven't so the owner was there. He said she showed up. She was like, "Hey, you gonna play some pool?" And I was like, "Yeah." And I was like, "Well, let's play." So she put some cords down, and uh, and then Paul goes over and says, "Hey, uh, we need to have a talk." They go outside. She gets her stuff, and then she leaves, and she doesn't say bye or anything. Oh. Um, wow. But apparently, she said like, "I'll give you back the sign." Like, I'm I'm sorry. Like, she apologized. Said she would give it back, and he was like, "Nope." And I was like, "She's been coming here for ten years, yeah. spending all this kind of money." You're not gonna give her a second chance. Yeah, you know, and that was really that was really what got me. You know, I was like, oh, that's, geez, that's rough. like any one of us that go in there all the time. Yeah, are just on the precipice of getting 86 if we do one. It's like you go in there, you drink, a, you drink a bit. You know, where's like, the loyalty? <laughs> where's the loyalty and where's like the? I mean, come on, it's a bar. Like right, like you gotta expect, you gotta, you gotta afford for to, yeah. allow like some yeah. some crazy shit to it's happen. Like, it's it would be one <laughs> thing if you were like, oh, I like I never liked him anyways. Right. But, <laughs> you know, if they've been coming there for 10 years, they've been loyal, they've been tipping, you know, and they don't really do anything and just wrong. one drunken night. Yeah. That's... It's like you, ma- you made a mistake at a bar. It's not unheard of. Right. So. Well, oh, well. Anyways. Yeah. Anyways. Let's be on our best behavior before I have to 86 anybody. I'm specifically looking at the cat. The Frankie Frankie cat over here. She's is, already fucking with the wires. She's <laughs> she, new setup, and she knows exactly what she's doing too. Oh yeah, there's she's, one fatal flaw in my. Plan she's like here. actually she's like, looking around very intently right now to find some way to fuck this show up. Mm-hmm. Like she's uh, yeah. that's that's part of her goal right now. She's like, like you guys have been fucking with me for like a month straight, yeah. and now it's time for me to get my cat revenge. She yeah. might do a little nibble. She's like, I saw that drawing that nibble. Dr. G did of me, and he's an asshole. Yeah, and what a dick. <laughs> what a dick. Yeah. It'd, be, it'd be funny if that, if that cable was on the ground, because that one, that one needs yeah. phantom power, right? Mm-hmm. So she like nibbled it, got a little jolt. I, I feel Don't like give her any happened. ideas, like Something Something like really loud over... She was fucking with this thing over here, this power surge protector. Yeah. And it just I heard this super loud sound, and then she jumped and ran away. I didn't see what she was doing, but I, I blame you for that, Kat. So you ever I had to experience like stuff like that? Like any type of like external forces fucking with the equipment at one oh, of the yeah. events that you're doing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because this is totally like some Ghost Whisperer shit, too. you got to see something, right? <laughs> it hap- it hap- it's not... <laughs> It's not necessarily like mystical ghost e- external oh stuff. No, ghost Hunter, thank you. Ghost, ghost Hunter. Whisperer yeah. is this terrible show that, that oh that is a show that my girlfriend loves uh, on CBS. It's it's um, what's her name? Uh, uh, you know what? I'm it's, blowing. It's this. hard to decipher. Go ahead. It's hard to decipher like the real serious shows or the shows that are trying to be serious, like dramas, and then like the reality shows. Like oh, they're trying super hard like, to yeah. add. Anyways, yeah. Ghost Hunters. Yeah, so it's it's usually the external forces are the people in the band. 
Oh, really? You know? uh-huh. Like, they're just, they're clumsy and they're messy a lot of the time. Uh-huh. So, like, they'll be sitting there and I've got, like, a box that's, like, my IO patch or whatever. You know, right. and they'll just, like, they'll go, kick it and then turn off the power on it and I lose, like, 32 channels of audio. What you know? the f- because it might be like the first one in the chain. If you if you take out the first one in the chain, all the rest of them go out. Right. Yeah, Christmas lights. You know? and, and so, so you have to go run back. Like yeah, I mean the thing is that at this point in my career, you know, like I I know what's I know what is probably happening. Right. But you can't necessarily like avoid it without going up to every single person and mm-hmm. saying like don't do this, don't. And then you're, you know. They look at them. And then, what an yeah. asshole. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what a jerk. Exactly. And they're like, oh, are you kidding me? We do this all the time. It's yeah. like, by the way, this I'm trying to make you stuff. sound good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to make you come out of the PA, period. And they're like, well, I don't, I don't want that anyways. Man, that's got to be fun to deal with that. Because you probably get yeah. a lot of a lot of egos in your line of work. You know? Oh, yeah. 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 More than a few. There's, there's a great example of egos. There's a guy. <laughs> there's a drummer. And I won't say his name because he's you know, like... In the jazz world, he's pretty big. Uh-huh. But I was setting up uh, to do a jazz show, and it was at um, it was. It's not exactly a hotel, but it's it's one of those like small rooms in Laguna Beach. Actually, you do stuff in Laguna Beach, right? Um, some. I mean, I go to stuff in Laguna Beach, okay. but I don't really. Do, well, what do you mean by do in, stuff? In in Laguna Canyon. Oh, okay, yeah. You know, right yeah. where that. You know, where the golf course is right there. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. So that used to be called the Aliso Creek Inn and uh, Golf Course. Okay. And when it was like that, they had had this room. That was kind of like their banquet hall. It was fa- fairly small, and it was really cool because it was like dim and like wood everywhere. Um, but we were playing. He, he was playing in there with like a, a group, and I started to mic up his drums, and he was like, "No, I don't. I don't want any of that stuff." And I was like, "Okay, oh, oh, but like what? that's something I need to do, you know, in order to get." So the thing that a lot of musicians don't realize is what the purpose of the sound guy is for that day, um, right? You know, so for that day, I was recording, which I usually do, but it's not something that I was getting paid for. I was doing it recreationally. So sure, my recording gets ruined. That's not on anybody. You know, it's fine. I'll deal with it. Mm-hmm. But incidentally, that day, there was also like an overfill room that was behind everything else and in a separate room. So I had a feed going to a speaker that was in that room so that people could hear it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was like setting up mics. You know, I'm going like, oh, I'm gonna. it's going to sound great in there. They'll all be able to hear it. Everything's going to be great. Um so then he was like, I'm not doing that. Like, I'm not doing this mic thing. Like, you don't need any of it. And I was like, all right, that's the way it's going to be. And so the people in the other room got piano, they got vocal, they got sax, they got everything. Just no drums. What yeah. And fuck? it's like, it, and it's right. like it's, I'm trying to do this yeah. for you. <laughs> like, this like, it doesn't do like, you know, it doesn't take away from the fact that you're playing a real drum kit. Like, it's like yeah. this old, like, fear of like going digital or electronic right. or something. Yeah. You know, they yeah. can't. The purest like, kind of. Yeah. The idea. purest kind of idea that you, you, if you, if there's wires attached to it, then it's not, you know, real music. And yeah. that's so absurd and bizarre and yeah. just but fucking lame because like okay a, a, a jazz drummer like you guys got one movie and it was that one with uh what's the with miles teller it's like Whip, whiplash you're talking yeah about? whiplash yeah. you know it's i have like, no on. idea what you guys are talking you about you don't need <laughs> that big of an ego to be a jazz drummer man it's like just be cool yeah. you know yeah, well they should the, be the cool funny that's thing, what jazz is the funny right? thing you know, about cool. whiplash is it got a lot of backlash from you know a lot of it got it got it got hard. I was trying to. It got some pretty negative was... reviews from like guys that like are playing and stuff like that. Oh really? I mean, it's it's kind of a double edged sword because one, you have a movie that's about a genre that's you know that's a in my opinion like a, a great genre, a large genre, you know, uh, but the movie itself painted it negatively in a way, you know, because they were yeah. trying to do that whole like. Buddy Rich style, you know, drumming yeah. and stuff like that. And that was, I feel like the drummer was kind of the, like the main character, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I saw bits of it. Like I saw it in oh, like you haven't pieces. Seen the whole thing. I haven't yeah. seen it all the way through yet, it's, but it's I'm mostly like, about like the relationship between him and his jazz drumming coach, right. which is very intense. And it, you right. don't really have to know anything about jazz drumming to really appreciate it. Cause I, it was a fantastic movie. Yeah. And also I'm not talking shit on jazz drumming. It's some of my favorite drumming. Right. I think, yeah. I don't even think that was like the best jazz drumming that was in a movie though that year. Like right. I think the jazz drumming in Birdman, I think was some of the oh, most phenomenal jazz I, drumming I haven't I've seen ever Birdman. There might have been better drumming on the video that I actually just saw for the first time today, and I kind of feel like embarrassed saying it, but because I've always made the comparison between Will Ferrell and uh, Chad from Red Hot oh, Chili yeah. Peppers, oh, yeah. but I just and I heard about this video, but I yeah. finally watched the Jimmy Fallon show drum off or whatever between With, them and yeah. i was just like the first thing that really struck me was the fact that 
Like, I know they look similar and they look like, but fuck, right next to each other with the hat on, like in yeah, the very the beginning. Same yeah, same outfit they on. Looked, That's kind of a trip. It was, I almost, for a few seconds, did not know who was who. And then, you know, when they were drumming, I, again, I saw Will Ferrell do it. I was like, hell yeah. And it's just like one of those awesome things because it shows, you know, how so many people in show business are just so multi-talented. Well, I have to stop you right there. Okay. <laughs> are you aware that Will Ferrell wasn't actually playing? He wasn't? No. Oh! He did a pretty damn good of fucking yeah, timing he, it up then. He, he was telling me Santa not, Claus isn't really I'm next. sorry. What the I'm sorry. I, I had to do, <laughs> I had to do that before because I felt like you were going in that it. direction. I thought for sure that, like, based on the, his timing, like, he had to practice that a lot then. Yeah, I think, I think what they probably did was they gave him the tracks that he was supposed to play. And then okay. he listened to them and then kind of, like, came up with the thing. But yeah. then as it gets, because, you know, like, it started off, like, like slower, kind of easier, right? Yeah, there were but a couple it, times where I was like, is the sound dragging or whatever? Because it was like, you know, yeah. whatever. But I just assumed because he was so on time that it just fucking, yeah. they gave it. Okay, so, well, like, it, it looks believable because he is kind of moving his hands in places. But then if you really look at it, especially when it gets faster, he's not actually hitting well, any of the heads. You know what? Mm. He still fucking won with yeah. the cowbell, though. Yeah. He still came out and yeah. fucked him up. That was pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, he's still going to be the most famous cowbell player of all time. So yeah. we've always had that <laughs> right. to, very to lay back. That's very true. Totally. Yeah. 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 So do you do you do that too? Do, like, do you see stuff in like uh, you know yeah, I'm movies and television and stuff like that about and, stuff like and that? And you're just like, oh, that's fucked up. That's not right. Yeah. Like, yeah. And it even gets to the point where, um, like in movies, and I'm not sure how big into production and stuff like that you guys are aware uh, that you're aware of, but there's a thing called ADR, which I believe is. Um, additional dialogue recording yeah yeah i've heard it um automatic dialogue replacement is what i heard i actually i think i've heard that too i think i don't know why it's that. automatic though, Dang, so i'm like same thing and they're using different terms what's yeah, it gonna automatic be doesn't make sense though, it, they, everybody calls it adr and they never refer to it to like yeah as it's just it, one of those so it's, terms, it's just like yeah. everybody knows adr and they know what it is yeah. so uh with adr that's <clears throat> a lot of times like if you see a, a movie and there's a beach scene and you see the actors talking it's not actually live them talking there's no way because in somewhere like a beach you can't take out the wave noise you know and you can't isolate you can't isolate it in the moment well enough to make it sound good especially when you're trying to get all these other things going like music and you know blah blah blah. reminds me of that thing you do when they were filming at the beach have you seen that movie with tom hanks where, i have like, the seen 60s that movie, band, yeah. and like this shows them they're all like dancing at a beach for a music yeah. video or a movie or something and then they're like it's clear that the music's not playing. And that was like when I was a right. kid, I saw that. I was like, what? They're not really playing music? Yeah. <laughs> uh, see, my favorite beach scene from movies that when, you know, I was in like, you know, my pre-teens was from Justin to Kelly, the American Idol movie. Hmm. And they're, <laughs> they have a beach scene. Wait, what? <laughs> Justin to Kelly. Yeah. Oh, starring Justin Guarini and Kelly Clarkson, the yeah. season one uh, winner. You just made me feel dancer. fucking old because you said when you were a kid. I felt like I was at least like in high school when I saw that when they were doing. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I have I have no idea. About Anyways, this movie. I just love that there is a scene in this movie because I went back because it's I it's considered one of the greatest terrible movies of all time and that's a hobby of mine. So I love watching really bad movies yeah. <laughs> and so I watched it for like the first time somewhat recently, like in the last few years, and you can actually see the tracks from the camera. Like in their their like their their tracking shots, you know, you can yeah. see the rails that the camera is on as it's going through there. It's just so shoddily done. And I, <laughs> nothing brings me greater joy yeah. than, wow. than some shit like but, that. But but for that thing with the whole ADR thing, I'm like hypersensitive to like watching it and being like, is this the real audio or is this like replaced? Right. Like the replaced audio. You know. That's one of my favorite games, man. Yeah. I love when they keep cutting away from somebody. You know, they keep using like B-roll or cutting to that. And right. They keep talking off camera. I'm like, oh, they are ADR the shit out of this. Like, yeah. what? happen like who yeah. here can't act you know yeah what's your like as far as films that you've seen that do a really good job or if not like you if know, they don't fake at all or but like they make it look so believable and realistic to where it's almost hard for you yeah. to tell. you know what one of them was was the born identity really and i think the second born identity won an award for it they have awards that i don't it's I don't know if it's attached to the Oscars. Now, or, what in the movie was like just the sound effects? Like, it's of it's sound, it's sound so, design, right? Yeah, it's the sound design in it. Um, like the that whole company that did those three movies, like it was just like incredible. And the thing is, is like that balance between using foley and using uh, you know dialogue replacement and all that stuff, effectively, realistically, and I guess musically in terms of like how it all sits there. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, is like. If you can 
get more into the movie and less distracted by the production side of it that's the whole goal that, you know yeah that's incredible and uh and and they just they just did it well and you really get into the movie you start getting lost in it you know like just the way and it's little things too like sometimes like you'll watch a movie and like something like some uh thematic element will happen you know like someone's walking down the street right and they have shoes on so mm. they have like they're walking down you the street the... but then your head your mind is going that's doesn't match for yeah. some reason, you know, yeah. and then you can't, you're painting, you're painfully aware that they're walking. Yeah. Which you would never be in real life. You're distracting from whatever's yeah. going on in the scene. Yeah. Like if you're, if you're watching someone walk by, you're not like, you're not looking at them going like, Oh, they're walking. You just like, it's a person. Now this attention to this sort of detail, yeah. obviously because you do what you do. Right. Is, is that's going to happen. Yeah. But w- when would you say that you started? Would you say that this happened after you started getting into sound and, and being the guy that mixes that shows? Or were you always like that as a kid? Like you just kind of looked for that sort of thing while I, watching movies? I was definitely not like that as a kid. Um, I still remember watching music videos and thinking they were actually singing in them. Yeah, <laughs> okay. You know? <laughs> yeah. And so I remember th- that being a time. It was really... So there's like the whole... There's multi the whole music thing and audio thing is multifaceted, right? So there's right. like broadcast people, there's like you know, on site recorder people, right? And, and there's like all these different ways that you can do it. So as I was you know making steps through uh, doing audio is when I started like talking to people and they're like, oh, I do this and I'm like, and then we'd have a conversation about it and then I learned that that was actually a thing, mm-hmm. you know, the thing with movies and ADR and all that stuff happened in uh, in college. Uh, when I went to Golden West. So I went to Golden West. I was uh, in a jazz band with Tom, or I was taking Tom Kubis' jazz band uh, on Monday nights, I think it was back then. And then at some point he was like, hey, you know, you might want to try, you know, some other stuff, you know, because I was like a, a mediocre trumpet player. I was not great, you know. And uh, so he kind of, you know, showed me like a little bit more of the technical side. And I was like, oh, okay, this satisfies both my artistic, you know, inclinations and my technical you know, inclination. I feel like know? I've taken his class, but it's been so long that I don't know. It's very name. Pos- He took, he, he, I did the, the recording, um, the record maybe producing class. That might be his son too. John Kubis. Yeah. So yeah, I took the son's class Yep. and then I took, uh, who was the other lady that taught Rena? Rena. Yeah. Yeah. So it was Rena's class that I started doing that other stuff in. Oh, that's such a small world. And so, cool. so, and she was really big. Like she has a passion for it, which is, which is, so important for me she if was I'm, super passionate yeah if i'm taking a class and the teacher doesn't care doesn't care about me blah, blah blah i'm checked out you know and i'm just like you know it's also hard if i don't really care about the subject like right the subject matter if i don't care about it it's also really hard which is why high school was so terrible <laughs> yeah um, i feel you on that so but were, uh, were you one of those that couldn't really focus on a lot of things until you got to something that you discovered that you really love like this right that's yeah. me to yeah. a t like i couldn't focus on anything but history or english because like i liked hearing stories and i was just intrigued by like history you know yeah. like but i couldn't focus on that but i thought you would have for sure because of what you're doing and how like how advanced you are at it like i thought you would have been doing this like on your own since you know well, it well seems but like here, this is the fascinating part is that um in high school so math was one of those things like i understood it but uh-huh. i didn't do the work and i didn't really have a passion for it okay but as i get into audio more um and especially like the parts that start really like really getting complicated like acoustical stuff mm-hmm. and um it's, math shows up you know right and like recently, I took a couple certification classes for um, for L acoustic system design, and you know, like the whole the, how they do their stuff, and you know what you need to know. But their their third class, which is um, called variable curvature line source training or something like that, oh, man. Um, they go through, and there's tons of math that you need to know and understand in order to do your job well. But when it's when it's that way. I'm totally into it and I can conceptualize it and I can learn about it because I actually care about the end product. Right. And like it's a means to an end kind of thing. You know, it's not like to me, the stuff in high school was hard to get my head around because it was like, oh, well, if you ever need to do this equation, this is how you do it. And it's like, when would I need to do that? And, right. and it's <laughs> yeah. like, oh, well, if you're going to build a house or, you know, it's like some, it's just things that like, yeah, I, they don't make it relatable. And that more, at the, more at the time, at the time, it like, sure, maybe in the future I would want to build a house maybe, but at that time I didn't want to build a house. Right. You know? I so, mean, I probably would have if I needed to, 
I would have helped, and I'm, I'm not like I can build a house from scratch, but right. like I would have helped someone, and then I might have been interested in it, you know, like yeah. geometry and stuff like that. But I don't even think that you really need to like learn that at that age, because I have family that like grew up and they built their houses in places in like New Mexico, and mm -hmm. I pretty sure that they never really studied yeah. any of that and they just like you know when you need to do it then you'll learn how to do it yeah. well i think you're touching on a good insight though when it comes to like education the, the way that we approach education in yeah. general which is when, yeah. you, when you when you lay it out in the terms that we do and you don't you don't put any kind of real world practical experience like i would have never like you know bothered with you know cosine you know waveforms and things like that like yeah. and the way that you the way that you do math for audio engineering which i've kind of dabbled in nowhere near where you're at mm -hmm. but i've kind of done it just because i wanted to take my video production up to the next right. level and and learning all the math for that has been surprisingly like a lot easier and learning mm -hmm. why you know waveforms go in there because i do have a practical application for it yeah. for something that i am really interested yeah. interested in as a means to an end i and yeah. you know what's funny is I, as much as i feel like there are there are certain things that you don't really need to know you know until you need to know them um i do think that if i didn't have any schooling or any sure you know, of that stuff i wouldn't have had the mindset to be able to grasp as quickly yeah. the stuff that i need to know now that you know? is true like yeah. i learned about like what a sine wave was in high school and that would have taken like a little bit more explaining when i found out that audio waves are also sine waves you know mm -hmm. it will an analogs an analog audio wave is a sine wave you know yeah so um you know like having that basis and being aware first is nice to have yeah. you know but yeah. i definitely like things like calculus you have to have those to do real acoustical engineering stuff hmm. because it's just it's the stuff that happens in that sense are just incredibly complicated you know and to do it right you need the math now the other the, the thing is like the, if you're going to be that specific like if you're using math that means things have to be pretty exact right um and th that even hap happens sometimes with um what i'm doing now um, but if you're going to be that exact, like you need to make sure that the end product is going to be exact. Now, given everybody's like, a, you know, everybody's human, there, yeah. there will be mistakes. But, mm -hmm. you know, the closer you can get to what the math says ends up being what you need it to be. Yeah. yeah. Anybody who's listened to this show for any length of time knows that many are made. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of mistakes when yeah. it comes to especially the engineering of this well, show. Well, and there's a lot of people that like there's like a different scale, too, because, you know, there's people like me who don't pay attention to most things when it comes to sound so like if there's a slight mess up here and there i'm definitely not the one that's going to go call it out for that i kind of take it for its overall tone and how it makes you feel but mm -hmm. i can certainly say from another stance how disappointing it is to be at a show where it might be one of your favorite bands or something that you're really looking forward to and the sound just kills it like it just oh, yeah. sucks mm -hmm. it's terrible yeah. it's like one of the worst things it's and it's because of the sound person you know it's yeah. maybe not necessarily because of the band at all but it's because i mean and sure they should be communicating in some way or whatever but like it really does depend on you know you guys and you guys are the under um what's the it called unsung heroes, the unsung you know? heroes because yeah. if you're doing if you're the the best sure is at your job nobody knows you did it that's, they that's only the goal. know when you fuck in up. a sense that's the goal like if yeah. if nobody notices that there was a sound guy that's a good thing yeah. you know um, wow that's now cool. <laughs> also also, like if it's really good sound, sometimes they do notice, and then you kind of have to be like, is that a good thing or a bad thing? And it's you know situation specific. But, sure. You know, like if you're trying, if you're at the Hollywood Bowl, right? They have the guys at front of house, and you're doing um, like one of the orchestras there. Mm -hmm. That's one. In my, if I were going to say, that's one where you would never want to notice that there was a sound guy because if you're listening to an orchestra concert, what comes out of the PA should be at best recreating as accurately as possible what is coming off the stage you know? right um so like if you start going like oh i really like that reverb or man like everything's like compressed really well or something like that you know not that <laughs> the lay person would necessarily say that but yeah um if you start thinking those things then the sound man is influencing the music a little bit too much you know so do you so, think for something like that with an orchestra, you know, back in the day, they just had it so much more down for because of the fact that they didn't have that kind of crutch? Back in the day... Meaning, like meaning like before sound uh, instruments, I mean, before we had oh, any before, ways to mix yeah. anything in, right. in a crowd. Uh, well, the fascinating thing is, is that the spaces were built for that. So like amphitheaters were, were built to amplify sound. Right. And uh they didn't really do outdoor venues like that because there was no way that they, the sound was going to travel far enough, you know. So you'd have like 
you know, theaters in the round or um, like a couple of the ones in downtown LA I'm finding out are a little bit more like that, you know, Mm -hmm. where they're designed so that sound will travel better, you Mm -hmm. know, acoustically. Um, One of my favorite fun facts is that the Beatles actually had to stop touring because sound design wasn't to the level to where they they could actually overpower the screaming girls in the crowd. Funny story about that. The Beatles tour, the Beatles U S tour was why monitors became invented. Ah, so, you know, like the floor monitors. Yeah. Um, they, what they did on some of those shows, um, I forgot what the first one was. I want to say Yankee stadium or like Uh Yankee stadium. I think so. Yeah. Yankee Yankee stadium was one of the, one of the really big ones. So, when they just got here. Yeah, when they, yeah. I think they landed in New York and then they just did like they did a show. But, and that's where you see the classic video footage of all the girls fainting and yeah. just going absolutely yeah. apeshit. So it that, still boggles my mind that that actually happened because you don't see that it's, anymore. It's pretty like, extreme back then. I, you really don't see it like that, but I wonder... I mean, there's different ways. It's kind of like... I mean, they people go crazy, but that was like a whole, a was, whole other wave of this. Level. Yeah, that's next because level. like... There's a certain I, cocktail of hormones. I think that's why drugs came into the mix like... at concerts. Drugs <laughs> came in there to calm people down so that they weren't <laughs> freaking out that much. Because yeah. those girls had no no weed in their system. You know, they were going like, oh my God, like freaking out. Just like, yeah. you know, need to chill out. Yeah, yeah, you never see anybody fucking freak out and pass out sober at like a Grateful Dead concert. It's always <laughs> for very different reasons. You know? Very yeah. different. Very different but reasons. speaking of those guys too, that I was watching about the wall of sound that they mm-hmm. created. Like I had no idea like that a band like them would necessarily because they're not a very loud band you know they're Which not like grateful dead? yeah the grateful dead they're not a very like loud like in your face band they're way mm-hmm. more of like a chill like jam rock band you know mm-hmm. but just because their crowds were so big that they had to go and create that wall of sound which yeah. was i think to date like the biggest uh supposedly like the biggest setup with all those speakers and everything like mm-hmm. the most like the craziest setup that anybody's ever yeah. had i mean and the like kind of what I was saying with the monitors. So the, the the first monitors were just uh, guitar cabs angled up um, at the singers. Oh, okay. And that was because, like you were saying, like they they couldn't hear themselves over the screaming crowds. Jeez. Um, but the thing is, is that like as you know, as technology has advanced, we're finding better how to um, push sound farther distances, and you know, have it more even and stuff like that. So with the wall of sound, there's a there's a ton of acoustical problems that come into play when you have that many sources unaligned the way that they were you know okay so it might be the biggest one but you know it's not the it's, not it's just more like, for show yeah. like for... Well, i mean it, it i don't know i don't know the story well enough but it's possibly just we're like oh more speakers is louder and that's better this you know? one goes to 11 yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah it kind of just yeah that's but yeah i mean you you look like if that had been an effect if that was the most effective way had had that been the most effective way you would still see it today but yeah. you don't see oh, that today. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, you know, I never really had an appreciation for it until I my buddy uh, designed a like a speaker system for my other friend, mm-hmm. and I was like, "You gotta like really design it. You don't just buy them, plug them in." And he was showing me all these layouts and these drawings and all this. He was an engineer, and Dang. it was this very technical math. And I was like, "Whoa, I am so out of my element." This is like mm-hmm. six years ago, and yeah. I was like, "Damn, I had such a such a new respect for everything that goes on with that." Was that for like a home system? Uh, no, I think it was for his car. Oh, okay. Yeah, he wanted to like turn his whole trunk into a some base thing. Uh, I don't yeah. know. I'm not one of those people. I don't really, you know, people I'm, sit in the trunk just, and have the. I'm you know. like the furthest from one of those people. I think I might be the only person I know that doesn't know how to DJ. Like I don't know how to use. <laughs> like I think like all yeah. of my friends like know more sound than I do. Like just because. <laughs> They're all like doing the same thing. I'm so lame with that. Like, you know, yeah. give me a guitar, I'll go play in the woods. And like, I'm not to be like the jazz drummer that was like all mad that you were miking him up. I want people to mic me up. I just don't have any fucking clue of what to. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm getting better a little bit here and there at like understanding the lingo, but it's like the way I speak Spanish. Like, I can kind of understand you, but I'm going to be like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I need you to plug in the thing over there to the thing. Like, I don't. It's the way Spanish yeah. is. Like, You're like just... a musical pocho, man. I like, like that. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> como que, go, can you get that over there, please, for me, por favor? Like, you just throw some, like... It's the chingadera over there. The chingadera, la chingadera. <laughs> we'll throw way at the end of everything. Yeah, and... then you sound like you're a native, you know? Yeah, oh, you know, okay. exactly. Oh, come on, way. In the yeah. kitchen, it's like, I need it to go out, way. And they go, <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> man. Hey, so what is this thing we have right in front of us right here? I'm, like, kind of just, like... It looks just staring at it right now. This or this? The, the, no, that. This. Yeah. Oh, the okay, I was like, we can talk <laughs> about this like, too. We can talk about both so, of them. So this is um, 
rabbit hole bourbon. Ooh. Mm-hmm. And uh, all the best I went, bourbon comes from rabbit holes. Yeah, is that true? <laughs> no, no, it's not true. At all. If there's a barrel in the rabbit hole, maybe. Ooh, and, there we go. Maybe Bugs Bunny Kentucky. was the is original it, it bourbon dis- distiller in Kentucky, distilled, distilled from real rabbits. <laughs> in yeah. Kentucky, Kentucky rabbit holes only. Yeah, this got dark real quick. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but I. So I went. I initially went because um, I. I went to. This, I hung out with some people, and there the bartender there, super like whiskey bar type place. And, uh, like he was all about it and they were all like talking to like people and I was like not really enjoying the conversation. <laughs> yeah. So I went over and I talked to him for a second and he was like, Oh, that's cool. You know, you like bourbon. And he was like, well, what are some of the ones that you've like tried recently? And we talked and then, uh, we came up, Oh, he came up to me and he gave me one of his favorites and I was like, this smells like pee. <laughs> and I don't enjoy it. And I felt kind of bad saying that, but I'm not the type of dude that sugarcoats stuff and says that I like everything just because I feel like it's going to not hurt people's feelings. That's good. Like, yeah. If if I don't like something, I'll say it. And some people don't like that I do that because they're like, oh, well, you can't just be like, eh, isn't that? I mean, you're probably not the first guy who tried that whiskey, and nobody else had the balls to tell him that his Maybe, whiskey smelled that's like very, Or that's they probably just took his word for it and were like, yeah, well, this is really good. It comes in a nice bottle, <laughs> and, an, and it's an expensive whiskey. It could have been pee. And so some people. People are too afraid to go like, oh, I don't like this expensive thing because they think the money equals good. Yeah, you know? Maybe just reusing the same bottle. That yeah. would be. What if it was I really did, pee? I did that at my house. I <laughs> I had a I I did I did events. Uh, well, I do a lot of events, but they had like an empty bottle of Blue Label just like laying laying out somewhere. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, oh, cool. I'll just you know it, I asked. I think I asked like one of the waiters like, are you guys just gonna throw this out? And they're like, yeah, we always do this. Blah blah blah. So I took the Blue Label home. It had the cork in it and everything. Mm-hmm. Washed it out. Put it up on the shelf. People like made some comments. It was empty at this time. Mm-hmm. Uh, people made some. Oh, is that you? And I was telling them like, oh no, it's not. So then one of my roommates got me a bottle for I think it was my I think it was Christmas, uh-huh. which is on your birthday, sure. Yeah, Christmas or birthday, whatever. <laughs> um, but he got me uh, a bottle of it, and you know it was it's great. You know it's really it's easy to drink, which is cool. Um, it's also very expensive, as we all know. Yes. Um, but so I still had this empty bottle of Blue Label. So people would come over before the empty one, or it, after I'd gotten the new one, the full one, mm-hmm. and they would be like, "Oh, I love, I love whiskey, you know. Oh, you have Blue Label? Can I, can I have some?" And it's one of those things. It's like Blue Label's expensive enough that it's like your eyes scream I, now. I, I, I kind of just like I, I feel like special occasions only. Um, Mm-hmm. And then definitely not something that you give someone to mix with coke. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So oh oh what the fuck? They oh, they, no, they didn't they, they didn't house. they didn't do that on it. Oh, but okay. it was like those like, type, some the, ice and some yeah coke. the type like, of no, people no. that are going to put coke in scotch. It just get at it. Don't don't ask for blue. Yeah, that's you what know? that's what red labels for. You know? Yeah, that's what red labels for. exactly <laughs> exactly. So they were doing that, and I was like, oh, man, like I don't know. What it is. So then I took um <laughs> I took the <laughs> cheapest whiskey that I had which is Kessler and it's great for Coke. It's great for if you're trying to, you know, just like have some guys over to play pool and you want to make some whiskey Coke's cool. Mm-hmm. Kessler. It's like a $6 bottle and it's like <laughs> I was going to say is this fair- Bar- like Barton's quality or something Yeah. Like- yeah. Okay. It's like it's 6 bucks for uh, a 750 mm, and uh that's quality. and you and you don't feel bad about it and it's like it's, <laughs> yeah. it's halfway decent, you know, it's like a, a like a blended like an American blended You're speaking thing. this guy's language over here, Mr. Hurricane. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> So All about a deal. So I took I took this thing and I put about half of it in that empty bottle of Blue Label. There you go. And then I put it up on the shelf. <laughs> so sure enough, people come over. Oh, can I try them? Sure. Give it to them in a little thing, <laughs> the fancy glass of Glen Cairn. Right. And uh, they go, oh, it's just it's so smooth. It's it's great. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. <laughs> now mind you, after probably four or five of whatever shots they had, it might have tasted like it was the greatest thing in the world regardless of True. what but, they knew but this it was. is a human thing right you know they've, it done, is. Absolutely. they've done so many studies yeah. right. on like wine yeah. where they give people you know oh i love it i love that shit. next to the 300 hundred dollar bottle and they yeah. pour them but they switch the labels people go oh yeah and they just go off on this big thing about yeah. about the perceived value of it when really it's it's the two right. buck chuck and, and, and the thing is like guys. authenticity i'm like i'm big on Hurricane's authenticity not that bad. you know sponsor us <laughs> <laughs> But you know, I just I wish people would just say what they actually think, you know. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with saying that, like I don't know, Kessler is great, you or know. Or just saying you don't have an opinion, like or, oh, it's or, all right, like yeah. I'm not, I don't care to be a sommelier, like yeah. so, like it doesn't matter to me. It's wine. Yeah, I'm drinking so, it. I'm here to get drunk. I'm not here to like sure, fuck sure. It, you know. Did you tell your buddy that his whiskey smelled like pee? 
I did. Well, I didn't tell my buddy who's the bartender. Oh, the bartender. Right yeah. yeah. So I did tell him that I thought it smelled like pee. Uh huh. And then I tried it, and I was like, I don't. It doesn't taste like pee. Not that I would know. <laughs> But <laughs> not like any pee I've tasted. Right yeah, here. I mean this is not this is not high shelf. You're, you're pee, talking about you know? around Europe. It's more like a like a European. Yeah, it's like. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> so I told him that I just like wasn't a fan of it. He was like, "Hey, you know what? That's fine. You know." And he was cool with it. You know, obviously because you know, what's yeah, he gonna yeah, what's yeah, he yeah. gonna say? Like, oh, I'll be, get out of my bar. No, pee on you. Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is yeah. <laughs> no, this is the real stuff. <laughs> um, no, That's so why I don't work in so we had that we had that conversation, and I was like, I, I don't really like it. And he was like, "Hey, try this other thing." And I'm going. This is like a really long story for this for this one rabbit hole uh, <laughs> bourbon that we got. But um, so I went over there, blah 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 blah. Oh, so then he pulls over a bottle of E. H. Taylor, I think it's called. Yeah, E. H. Taylor or Colonel E. H. Taylor, I think it's called. And uh, and so he poured me some. I was like, "Wow, oh, it smells not like pee." You know? <laughs> That's a plus. And then I tr- already winning. And then I tried it, and it was incredible. Okay. It was uh-huh. really good, and I really loved it. And I was like, I I'm going to go out and buy a bottle of this, like the soonest chance that I get. So um, we started a little bit late, and the closest total wine I think is this one to me. Okay. So I was like, this yeah. is perfect. Like you guys are right down the street from it. Yeah. I'll just stop there. I'll cruise around a little bit, and uh, so then I, I go to the whiskey aisle, you know, to the bourbon section. And I'm looking around. And I'm like, I don't see this bottle anywhere. So. After looking around a little bit more and then trying to see like if it was in like a weird like you know like how they have the high end spirits all locked up. Mm-hmm. I was like maybe I'll go over there, see if it's in there. And no, it wasn't. So then I go up to the front and I go, Hey, you know, can I the the guy with the r- huge mustache, he had like the curly cue and everything. I go, Hey, uh, do you guys have any bottles of E. H. Taylor? I mean there's like That's insta- the guy to ask about whiskey, by the way. Yeah, the guy you that look looks for the, the, the guy that looks like his mustache, yeah. you're like this guy knows all about yeah. craft bullshit, this fucking yeah. hipster. Yeah, okay. Um, so instantly, as soon as I said it, he was like, No, we don't have it. And apparently it's like they make they send it out or something like that, or they distill once a year or something like that. Like they only put it out one time a year. It's not like it's just like, like the fuck like it's a goddamn cicada or something. I didn't- it's <laughs> uh, apparently it's well sought after. So, um, so then I got, you know, dejected I go back to the bourbon aisle and I'm looking around. There's a guy that's restocking some bourbon bottles and I'm like, Hey man, like, do you drink bourbon much? And he was like, Oh yeah, like that, the, this is my aisle. And I was like, ah, that makes sense. You know? So then, uh, I asked, Hey, like if you've ever had Colonel E.H. Taylor, like, is there anything here that's like similar to that? Like in that same kind of idea, right. you know? And he was like, well, and then he like looked around and he started by saying, well, in that price range. And then I like, I was like, no, I, that, that's not where I'm going with this. Like, I'm not <laughs> trying to find a specific price. I'm trying to find like that idea or that, you know, sim- similarity. Cause yeah, I like that one. Flavor profile. Yeah. The flavor profile or whatever. And like, I liked that one. Yeah. I didn't like the other one, which is also a bourbon, you know? So it's like, I don't like that one bourbon. But I like this one. So, like, if you know those two things, maybe, like, as <laughs> yeah. as an employee of this store, you yeah. know, maybe you can help me out a little bit. So, uh, so he went through a couple, and he was like, this one, and then two other ones. So, then he was like, hey, actually, I've got an open bo- bottle of this over here. Ah. So, then he, uh, and it was about, you know, like, half full. I, judging from that encounter, apparently they can, like, open bottles at the store and then, like, all the employees try it, which makes sense. Like, if you're you... You're totally going to get this guy fired, by the way. <laughs> well, <laughs> the... like, sorry, Greg. <laughs> the, sorry, I, Greg. I have not said any names or descriptions, so... Oh, Except but the... for the guy with the curly mustache. But he was not the same gentleman. He was not the same He was one. not... Right, so he's he's color. he's clear, you know, okay. and he was very helpful as well. So this guy had a bottle, allegedly. Yeah. Okay. His name is Hank Mardukas. Um, <laughs> Mardukas? <laughs> Mardukas. Um... <laughs> Anyway, so then, so he let me, uh, he, he like grabbed a couple of them and like I, you know, went around, smelled, sniffed them, you know, okay, cool, cool. No piss, no piss, no piss. Mm. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so then this was one of the ones that I came up with. So that is the story. That's the story for what we're about to try. And it better be as amazing as you say. Well, I hope so. You know, I, I, I I, just listened to a five minute story. I bought this story where we can work in like 17 P jokes is good. Is a good story to me. Right. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a long drawn out story for literally just going to total wine to pick up some beer. (laughs) Yeah. That's what we do. And the bottle hasn't been opened here. So we haven't even been drinking. folks. I did take the plastic off before we started. I threw it away. I think. Yeah, okay. Right there. I'm, right I'm, there. I'm getting the hint here. I'm going to go grab some glasses. Cool. Perfect. Yeah. You guys that'd be great. Continue. So yeah. one more thing about the sound. Like, yeah. so, um, you know, I, 
am one of those people that, like I said earlier, doesn't really pay attention as much to that. Sure. Um, so I kind of have a much different take on the music that I listen to than a lot of my friends who are very big into producing and engineering. Sure. Um, like, you know, it's, it's just a weird thing because it's kind of like, you know, how guitar players, like the ones that are very technical, like songs that are very very technical and mm. like hard to play with like you know I, I guess you could say more like classic metal with like sure. crazy arpeggios and stuff like that yeah. where i'm like a janky folk player that likes to play yeah. two or three chords and it's the same thing with like modern music my friends like the like tech electronic music that's like very experimental with sounds where like to other people they have that no idea why that's like why that's even important it's like oh this doesn't even really sound good to me you know right. but my question to you is do you have you been turned off to music like in any sorts of music no, or does it really bother you when you're listening to music do you really focus in on that i it, there's that's a two part answer i would say i have an increased appreciation for well produced music okay but music i still try to let it not you know affect me with anything else like in terms of what I think of the music itself, you know, mm -hmm. like I don't think that you should have to spend twenty thousand dollars to produce an album um, in order for people to like your music. Right. Like if if the song is good, then I think it should transcend all the other stuff, mm -hmm. you know, because if you look at like some of the classic jazz records, you know, like from back in the day, like especially like the, some of the Louis Armstrong recordings, you know, yeah, like they back in the day would record with one mic and they would place the mic as a way of um as a way of mixing mm -hmm. so back then like if you you would put like a trumpet section here you'd put a trumpet section or a saxophone section here and then you would move the mic depending on how you wanted those to come in so right. like with the louis armstrong recordings he would have to be way far away because he was such a loud player right and that but that's just how they balanced everything they would mm -hmm. balance based on space and stuff like that because that's where the technology was but that didn't mean that people hated his music and that doesn't mean people don't listen to those same records now. Right. You know, and that they don't appreciate Louis Armstrong more than they appreciate, you know, Gordon Goodwin's big fat band. You yeah. Know? Just because Gordon Goodwin's big fat band has better produced records in terms of sound quality and, you know, mixing skills and stuff like that. It doesn't, it shouldn't, that shouldn't, affect the music you and know? so for you it's definitely still more about the sound quality rather than the uh type of instrumentation like the quality uh the difficulty of how much it is to play like for instance like how our buddy john mm -hmm. kind of uh values music or just like right. some some things although that that's a lot weirder like there's some pretty random <laughs> random I, uh, I things there i can't get behind that at all <laughs> i don't know how much you've talked to him but like yeah, I've talked to him a lot about music, a lot. And yeah, it's... I just, I don't, none of it. I, like, I don't know if people, I don't know if him saying those things, if he gets respect for it, but, like, some, like, some of the people that I respect a lot as musicians and stuff like that, like, Can no. you catch us up a little bit on what this guy's saying? So, okay, we have a buddy named John, and oh, yeah. this guy Sorry. is the <laughs> I'm just cool... going to go off about it. <laughs> like, let me just start off by saying, this guy is, like, one of the nicest fucking dudes. Oh, that you'll he's meet. a fantastic he's like, person. He's a the great human being, That's and he's like... That's usually what you say before you start talking a lot of shit. Well, so well listen, listen, part, listen. Man. So, he's We're a great right guy. Time. He'll buy you drinks, keep drinking Ooh, all this stuff. that was a good... That, that came through nice. I yeah. like that. And you'll be sitting there having this conversation where, like, it'll be, like, all of these good points about things that you both enjoy and then you'll just bring up a band that's very widely you know popular and and well liked by so many people and he'll just like stone cold almost you, you can't tell if he's joking at first just like so oh that band it fucking sucks i that, hate that them. man's trash and it's just, garbage and just keep like a straight face and you're just like wait what he's like no seriously and then he'll go on to just like bad mouth like all of the great, like the things that like people like, just says, universally like, the enjoy. Are, yeah. like, terrible. The Beatles, the well, Rolling Stones, the Chili much, Peppers, so. like uh, every everything that most people like. But then he has a very very strong, uh, you know, like for metal music that people don't like, and I think that's because he listens to it for like the number, the mathematical aspect or something. Mm. You know, like the the how fast yeah. it is, the I, time I, signatures or something. I might just not have talked to him enough, but I, I can't figure out like what it is. <laughs> like what it is that he likes. Also because I'm not willing to listen to the bands that he likes. <laughs> I, I'm like, I don't, you know what his favorite band is? Uh, not my... Or what he tells people his favorite band is? Oh, fuck. I know it's like some metal band. Yeah, it's a metal band. But it's the name of the band is called Goat Whore. 
And just what? I'm completely un- I'm unwilling to even try to listen to this band no, just no. because of that. No, one hundred percent. Go Yeah, for I just it. like I know just by the name. I know I will not like it, yeah. and that sounds shallow, but it's just it's one of those things. I'm like, okay, you said that. <laughs> I don't respect you anymore. You know, no, also, I'm not as not as great. musical taste. He don't also hates movies taste. that everybody likes to like Forrest Gump and yeah. and things like Forrest that. Forrest Gump. There's a few movies, like maybe three or four, that I've almost cried watching. That was one of them. Right. Yeah. I I yeah. That's I mean that's just a classic. Yeah. I can watch from any point I mean, anytime. Goat whore kind of deserves to be judged. Like sure. they, they one hundred percent. Cheers to this cheers. drink. Cheers. Down the rabbit hole. Down the rabbit hole. Hot damn. That is a like very that. smooth. That is nice. I'm realizing just now, we're a couple of drunks. Because our instinct was to shoot the whole thing. And he oh. took a very <laughs> gentlemanly, classy sip from his. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Did you guys What vote? an asshole I am. Oh, I did, and then okay. I realized okay. what was happening like halfway through. I'm like, this is good whiskey. Why See, this am is, I... This is why I'm, I'm not, not a drinker, like because... Yeah. Uh, well, I, I used to be much more of a drinker, but um, I was never the type of person that understood why you would hold something with a very little amount of liquid at the mm-hmm. bottom of it and yeah. not just take the things at the dome. Maybe that's like the well, the bro party boy in me that like <laughs> never left or something. But I usually is. drink vodka and I'll usually hold the bottle in my hand starting at 4 a.m. in the morning till about <laughs> Whenever people start to get annoyed at me and tell me to shut up and go sure. to bed, because sure. you're a classy bitch. Yeah, yeah. you know that's. Yeah. But I, th- I think it's about like, um, I mean, I know at least with wine. I'm not sh- sure specifically about whiskey. Wow, that acted fast. <laughs> I slowed the fuck out of that. Anyways, I, it's it's a lot of it's with like, you know, people hold nothing. Nothing drives me crazy than people holding a wine glass like by the glass, mm-hmm. and they have all the thing there. Like the whole point of the stem is so that you hold it by that, so your hand isn't warming up the wine. And like fucking it up. You know? Well, but that's sometimes though. Like for instance, like white versus red. Like white, white. Yeah, it's I like fast my on me. I like my white too. wine like lava. What? Bro. You know, like white wine is in theory supposed to be served. You know, as like a little colder than you know. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to be a little chill. colder it's than supposed yeah. To be refrigerated, yeah. yeah, a little colder than room temperature. It's just not supposed to be drank. It's fucking nasty. <laughs> it's true. It's, it's not real it's, wine, and I will fight anybody who fucking it's challenges It's fucking me on that. Uh, yeah. I don't but, know uh, all that sugar. I mean, I like sugary wine drinks. Like I, all the dry <laughs> stuff, and this is why I'm, I never claim to be a wine person. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, especially because like uh, like I can't tell the difference between a lot of stuff. Like I, I know that I like what I like. Right, and so, you know, yeah, a little that, background. I mean, I ran a I ran an Italian restaurant for yeah. like you know almost six years, mm-hmm. and so I you know I know I know my wine because I because I had to learn my wine. Yeah, and now I just like nothing makes me. More upset than somebody walking. That, nothing would make me more upset than somebody yeah. walking into my place and going, "Oh yeah, I know a lot about wine." Right? How come you don't have any? Um, uh, what was it? Oh, fuck, what was it? It's like pink Zinfandel or some shit like that. Oh, white Zinfandel? No, <laughs> no it's but the they pink said. One. Oh, they said pink Zinfandel. Well, it, no, it was like there's. Oh man, is there a pink now I'm Zinfandel? Messing it up. There, there's some like pink bullshit. They're like, why don't you have that? I'm like, Moscato, that's literally Moscato, maybe. No, it wasn't a Moscato because they, they actually do make good Moscato. Oh, okay. But there's something that was like it was like a branding thing. But it's like it's like barefoot level wine. Like yeah. nobody right, right. beyond yeah, that yeah. makes that. Well, it's worse yeah. is when you get people. They, they want to have that with their fucking well done filet mignon. Oh, like, yeah. Get the fuck out <laughs> of oh, my yeah. Face. Well, well, well done anything. That's how people get 86 yeah. at my place. Yeah. yeah. There you Seriously. go. Yeah. yeah. But like when you go, it's funny when you go to Europe and then you asking for like, oh, can I get a Merlot or something? And they're just like, well, in certain places, like in Italy, I was like, they're like, huh? What? Like they don't. It's either red or white, and they have a selection of red mm-hmm. or whites that they all, you know, they all make there. Yeah. Um, is that what would the term be for wine uh, what? distilling? What? What do they do with wine? Uh, uh, I don't. It's not. Dis- they squish that shit. Yeah, they, they squish the grapes. Term. They squish the grapes differently, I guess, because they don't have the same terms that we do out here. They don't have the same types yeah. of like we have Merlot. Uh, Merlot. See, damn, this thing Merlot. did. Merlot. This thing did act pretty fucking fast <laughs> over here. Merlots, cabs, um, fucking Pinots. Yeah, like, and over there, they're just like... <laughs> this is good whiskey. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is like that the like, whole... I'm going to fucking fight the bar for my best friend <laughs> whiskey that's not even here tonight. Like, Dang. I'm going to fight for him. Like, yeah. you know, somebody's going to have looked at me Your a way that insinuated that they... talking bad about him <laughs> yeah. in a whole other area. And they're really just talking about some like fucking nonsense that has nothing to do with that. Absolutely. 
Good mm-hmm. shit. You got to go back and thank Greg Lu- or Hank Mardukas. Yes. <laughs> his, Mar- yes. His thank you, sir. <laughs> Hank yeah. Mardukas, an American yeah. hero. You are the motherfucking man. Yeah. So it's, it's, so, it's all, yeah. Sorry, um, go ahead. Back to what we were saying, though. Like, I want to kind of get into, as we're yeah. rounding up here toward the end, mm-hmm. how you, you know, what made you, at what point were you like, I want to start doing this as a business. I want to, like, start doing this for events and everything. Still yeah. my question. You mind reading some <laughs> of a bitch? Well, it's, it's interesting because my dad said or has said that I had an um, entrepreneur mind, you know, from a young age <laughs> because of... In high school, I would go to the store. I'd buy a bunch of like um, Orange Crush, and I'd buy a bunch of Kool Aid. Uh, Kool Aid, you know, little squeeze, oh, little really thin Kool Aid yeah, things. Classic elementary school. I'd buy husband. those things, and then I would sell them out of my locker for a little bit more than what they cost me to buy. Yeah. So then, like every time I needed to buy another six pack, I'd make you know I'd be making like five bucks or something like and that. And what and what what grade was this that you said? Uh, this would have been freshman year of high school. See, yeah, yeah. Joey, Joey and I were selling Hot Wheels and fireworks, bottle rockets. I used to, yeah. I used to get, but pa- making a profit. Yeah, I used to yeah. do. Uh, I used to get like the bottle rocket packets that were done like ten cents each and sell them for a dollar each. <laughs> <laughs> so you just like, wow. you're like, whoa, wow, yeah, dude, and inflation. Like, but you know what? Like, it was <clears throat> about the sales tactic. Like, I wasn't yeah. just the entrepreneur. I'm not good with numbers and stuff, but I was good at making kids back then believe that they needed to buy that shit. <laughs> like yeah. the Hot Wheels too. That was the biggest thing because Joey had a, Joey was the supplier with a bunch of the rare Hot Wheels <clears throat> and then I went and got pretty familiar with it and we had a company we called it DJ Hoko that was their name like it was had nothing to do with the business it Hoko? Was just, Hoko like a ho co- we were in 7th grade dude we yeah, were like sure, we don't, sure, wow sure. <laughs> yeah what was the co part? Uh, company oh so oh, like DJ Ho- da- David and Joey Ho company <laughs> even though it had nothing oh, okay. to do with right. with like that we were just and, right. and but I, I wouldn't ma- think twice if I heard DJ Hoko on the radio. <laughs> I made enough to, I made enough to buy my first amplifier, which was oh, a Fender cool. Hot Rod Deluxe. Ooh. As a seventh grader with yeah. no job, yeah. that doesn't even get like an allowance every day. That's a pretty big, you know, thing to go and buy. Yeah. Um, so I also guess you could say I had yeah. that sleazy salesman uh, in me <laughs> yeah. since I was little. Now I'm selling art for a yeah. living. Yeah. I mean, I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't really have to push you know like you said salesman i like i didn't have to push for this stuff to get sold like people it knew, sold itself it sold itself. People, people knew i had it and you, you just provided you couldn't get it on campus and sure. this was around that same time when the whole health nut thing at schools started happening so they were like oh well, you can't serve cookies because cookies are bad for the kids oh and so shit. then all these kids are walking around going like oh man like i, I love those cookies at least yeah that's what i was doing right and so like that kind of thing was happening and so it was like i was like the source of that there's actually another guy that I knew that did the same thing but he's a lot younger than me, and it was like the same thing. Like the teachers like want to have their things, the kids want to have it, you know. And I'm That's, just the guy that has it, yeah. you know. And they don't have to risk uh, getting oh, what was it like detention or whatever for leaving campus during school, right? You know, because you can't get that here. So if they want it during third period, you know, they go over to Christopher and Matt's locker. You always you know? had that, that that mindset to bridge, you know, yeah. the supply and demand. Yeah. It, there, there's a yeah. There was a demand. I decided that I wanted to be the supplier, and that's how that happened. So, so how did you get into that though? Like, where did you it find just, that? it? You just, just you it just made do. sense to me at yeah. the time. But I like, was like to to reach out to people to find gigs, like, like oh, oh oh oh, that's what so, I mean. Skip ahead so a bit. yeah <laughs> yeah, um, I it started. I did it really increment incrementally. Mm-hmm. Like I I started off because I wasn't happy with the system that I was given for a job. I didn't have any equipment to start off with, you know, maybe I had like one mic or something like that. But so I was doing this job um, that was like a jazz concert series. So they would do it every other Wednesday. And uh, that was like one of the first really things that I had complete control over as to mixing and being in charge of stuff. And that was 2011 ish. And so at some point, and this was when I was still working at OG's, Mm -hmm. I was doing the bartending, serving, bar backing, that whole thing. So I was making like a, a good money for someone that was living at home and I was doing this show and they were like these really terrible Yamaha passive like uh, karaoke type speakers. Right. Not supposed to be providing sound reinforcement for 300 people. Right. You know? And so at some point I was just like this sounds terrible and I want to do something about it. So I went out and bought um, two like $800 speakers. And that was the first purchase I made, and they were QSC K12s, and I still have them, and I still use them all the time. Wow. Um, 
and it just it made a huge difference and i had more i there was more that i could i was happy with what i was doing right you know so i did that and then i was like okay well that's a start and then i was like okay well i can't be using this four channel interface if i need to have like a full you know five piece band you know that Mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense so then the next one i bought a little analog or not a little one it was a 16 channel analog mixer so and it had effects on it which was great the effects engine ended up going bad during a show that was bad but um so then i bought that console so then now i had two speakers and then i had uh the console and then just over time like with the money that i was making from the restaurant and then the money that they were paying me i started like just buying more stuff you know and uh that's how it started and that's still how it's going you know like i still here and there all like i, I dropped uh like almost seven thousand dollars on a new console wow. because i needed i wanted not to be in the lower end console market you know i wanted to like say like hey i don't only have x32s and x32s are thought of as like the cheap they are the cheapest console but that being said they're amazing and right. I've, d- I've done a lot of really great shows with them some of my favorite board mixes have come off of them um but you know they run at 48 kilohertz which is you know it's better than a mp3 yeah um but it's not quite up to the par of like large scale shows you know Mm -hmm. so this console can run at 96 and um it sounds incredible the a to d conversion inside of it's amazing you know and uh and i just thought that was like a a good way to like start getting there and showing people that like i'm not just trying to be joe schmo out of his garage you know i'm trying to get up to somewhere you know and how long did it take you to get to this point uh well i like i was saying the concert thing that i was doing like it started in 2011 and then i kind of look at uh the summer of 2012 as being when i started uh really doing the hux audio thing okay um what's the largest like show that you've done i know you did like a grammy party yeah like you've done as a as as me doing everything or as just me working it so like is for you okay that's another thing i wanted to get into as well so you for your business i mean because you probably get hired to join like a team right as well but you're for your business you don't employ anybody other than yourself right you Mm, do it all by yourself no i send out guys on jobs oh you do oh so you do have people with you yeah okay I, i sent out about seven 1099s this year Oh wow! So oh, seven nice. guys made over seven hundred bucks with me out throughout the year. And where do you find just like are they all like kind of just professionals that are trained that you reach out to through like like they're all looking for work or do you know them personally? Yeah, I, I I say I pick every single one of them. Like I I don't do the whole um, audition pay for thing. hire thing. Yeah, yeah. Especially- well, I I end up working with a lot of guys you know through all my other things. Like I mean I have my own you just, company. You just network. Naturally. Yeah, it's, especially it's, if you've yeah. been at this hustling since exactly. 2011. Like, exactly. Like you know like you you meet people. Mm-hmm. You talk to them, and then you hear, like, especially if I'm doing an A2 thing, which, you know, you have to start on almost any company. You have to start as an A2 unless you have, like, the like the recommendation. Like, say, uh, say uh, Andy Grammer's front of house guy says, hey, I can't make it to a show. It's a smaller one. You know, I mean, he would never say that probably, but um, I can't make it to a show. Use this guy because he's, like the best or whatever you know that that's how you can get those things skip through all the loops but you just go to a company like rat sound or uh you know any one of those kind of places and you don't really come with a recommendation they're gonna be like okay yeah you can get hired here but you're gonna be doing you know helping out yeah it, not the, the not work, not the running intern, it you know yeah. which is a good business practice i would say and, and that's that's a hell of a way to start too, yeah if you, if you know nobody yeah but so, so doing those kind of things i run into a lot of good a1s which are the front of house type guys you know Mm -hmm. i run into a lot of people that are just good people to to work with you know sure and so from that like i have like a like if i go on my phone and i put in like sound or audio uh, there's like a ton of contacts just just from that you know Mm -hmm. okay yeah and uh and so that's usually when i go through it and i have like a couple core guys that i try to use first because it's most of the time so there's this one guy that i use more than anybody else and that's renee and i use him because number one, he does great work. Number two, I know that if he says that he can't do the job, it's because he literally can't do it, and he's not just like, oh, I just want to lay at home today, you know. Mm-hmm. Like he will, little, he'll he'll work as long as he can, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's me. That's that's one of the reasons why I like him. It's like he's like an, another version of me, and he has a hustle like I do, and um, and I appreciate. It. But it's that's it's great. also because he does good work. 
you know. And so how long did you do, like, you know, because you, you, you said earlier that you had done some free work. How long of, of that did you do? And did you just decide to kind of, was that like kind of like your own sort of self-imposed internship kind of thing just to get ex- experience and kind of get going? Yeah, I didn't really see it that way, though. Um, that ended up being what it was. Um, but I did a lot of those basically free things because I didn't think I deserved to make any money. You know, I was like, I'm not, I'm not, I, I'm not bringing first. anything to the table yeah. here, you know? So, you know, I'm just happy to learn. Mm-hmm. I didn't really say that necessarily. Yeah. But everybody, everybody feels that though. But yeah, that's, that's a sentiment that yeah. anybody who, who has ever even dreamed about working for themselves or had this, you know, crazy dream to do something that's, that's in a, a creative field, yeah. you know, and now we consider this a creative field. It's a, it's a yeah. more glamorous one than being yeah. a, you know, a, a dog walker or, or a doctor <laughs> or something like, wow. Okay. No, never mind that. But but I get all the what dog you're walkers saying, are coming in like uh, phoning into the yeah, show. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I apologize. <laughs> I'll show to all you, motherfucker, and they'll show you like all of the way. Yeah. <laughs> but but no, I definitely yeah. feel you on that one. You know, yeah. the kind of the imposter syndrome that comes about with right. it. You just go, oh fuck, I, I I don't know anything. I don't deserve to make any money, and so you just do shit for free for a long time until one day you're realizing that these people who are getting paid are using Yamaha karaoke speakers to fucking right. do a room for 300 people. Yeah. And you're just like, what the fuck? These guys are getting paid? Yeah. Shit, maybe maybe I should too. That almost sounds like an origin story. Like that's where you find right. your confidence. And that's yeah. something that I think a lot of people can identify with, myself included, man. I'm, right. I'm hearing this story and even though I don't do what you do, right. I went through all of the same Yeah, shit, I mean, what man. I'm doing is what a lot of other people that want to get somewhere are doing. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm no different in terms of like how I got to where I am. It's just a different field. I you think know? that there's a sort of blessing that comes from being that way, though, a little bit, because you truly are humble enough to want to better yourself. Like your your main focus right off the bat is not to make money, because I right. think a lot of people are like you know a lot more action than they are in than they they you know are in uh, in thought you know when it comes to right. like what they want to be and letting kind of it mold into it naturally rather than like setting it up from the beginning and try to chase something. And then like at some point plateauing because you're not really developing creatively. You're not right. really hungry for it mm-hmm. anymore. And so when you do that, you're, you're naturally hungry for it. And so you're going to go and then you get to that point where you're like, fuck, well I have come a long way. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're right. These people are using these, these shitty speakers that I used to use and they're making money off of it. Well, that's where the confidence that you've developed finally kicks in. Right. And because now you know what you're talking about. And yeah. people have seen, well, this kid's a hard worker. You know, he's fucking done it. He's been here putting yeah. his effort into it and shit. Yeah. Like if he demands this money now, then we know what he can do. Yeah. So. Right. But yeah. Well, that, that's awesome stuff, man. Well, I we really appreciate you coming on. And yeah. so like, let's, let's drop some plugs here, man. So anybody who else has got, um, you know. Yeah, like uh, there's uh, like a big variety of ways that like, you know, for, at least for me, the stuff that I provide, you know, like I can do, you know, a thousand person venues, you know, I can set up systems for that now. That's a new thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've been doing, you know, like wedding stuff, like birthday stuff, you know, for a while. Um, and then like cover bands that go out to do private events, you know, like that kind of thing. Um, so it's like, you know, I try to be a one stop audio shop. Um but I never really limit myself to that because I also, for a couple of things, I've done like PMing. So if someone says, "Hey, I have a, I have like a, this was a mushroom convention type thing," mm-hmm. you would have loved it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was literally this guy talking about the microcosmos, and it's like how mushrooms like made us. His claim was is that we were, we were apes. Stone and then the oh, yeah, first this is the Terrence McKenna ape theory, the stone yeah. ape theory. Oh, man, and then yeah, they like they ate a mushroom and it opened up all the synapses. So it's this guy, you know. Uh-huh. And uh, so, yeah, of course. Um, and so, like, you know, that kind of thing, like, they had me do, or I came in to provide uh, projectors, staging, lighting, and audio, you know. Mm-hmm. And I have all, like, the connections to get there. So I do, like, full production. I do audio only. I do, you know, like, a lot of different things. So yeah, You're one of those types that does not say no to a job. Correct, correct. Yeah. I, and I love that. And that's how you have this. You've my dad said this. one time, I think, I think it was my dad that said this. He said, there... Uh, there's nothing you can't do. You can, it's something about like I'm totally butchering it. Basically, now. you're not too good for any line of work. Yeah, but it's like there's always a like there's always a way. You can never say no as long as there's like a price or something like. I can't I can't remember it now. 
There's a lot of different things that kind of mean the same thing in their own way, which is, yeah, don't don't think you're above anything because you never know the opportunity that, you know, you will end up having from that. You might learn one of your greatest fucking lessons that night because anything can happen situationally. And so it's good to know that you're like that, too. So what so for like people that are looking for sound, like where can they reach you? Like if they're they're in need of somebody to run sound for anything from a, a wedding birthday right. event a concert so where can on, they find on you? my website which is huxaudio.com which is h u x x a u d i o mm-hmm. um, on that website there's a contact form you okay. can you can write one in there i get an email and then you say you know like a brief thing like hey i need a audio engineer for this concert or i need full production for this thing or you know something like that and then i'll get back and say like hey you know i can do that or here's this guy or you know something like that so sure Awesome, uh, that, that's that's the contact for it. So. And what do you have in terms of advice for anybody who might be trying to, you know, pursue a passion in this? Do you see any sort of um, emerging uh, trends or, or maybe even some ways that the the industry is shifting that you can kind of lend some sort of advice to anybody coming into it? I would it, always be prepared to work your butt off. Okay. And I, when I was getting into this, like even in like the larger stuff, when I was like just being a stagehand for like Britney Spears or for, uh, you know, like just being, you know, you know, know. but like it's, it's a small job, you know, but it's like, it's a good one, you know, and you, and you like learn stuff, you know, you know, being that proximity. Yeah. So just like if you work, if you work harder than like some of the other guys, you'll, you'll get noticed and you'll like, people will be aware that you're doing that, you know? And, um, and I'm a big, I'm a big proponent of that. Like if you work hard, people will notice it. And then you will benefit from it at some point. You yeah, know? it all just, pays off. Just yeah. get to making, get to doing your thing. Yeah. I love it, man. Yeah. Well, yeah, as we're wrapping up here, of course, we will be putting your, uh, you know, all of your contact info cool. and your stuff cool. on yeah. in the show description. We'll be promoting awesome. you on social media. And if you guys are not cut up with on social media, I highly advise you go and you check out at Let It Bleedcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We are very active 2018 we're feeling vigorous and of course don't forget to subscribe to the show all right tell your friends it is it's going off right now yeah. and it's getting better it's getting better and we have got some interesting shit to say yeah you are our first guest and i want to thank yeah. you very much for coming on especially on such late notice too yeah, uh no. you know it's kind, <laughs> no of, problem. kind of just a last that's how it, that's how we operate yeah, nowadays yeah, you but know? you know and yeah. that's how we all operate we're all I've just been, making it up as we go absolutely yeah. i wanted you to be on for a long time i actually lost you a while ago but i'm glad it finally happened now yeah. and um i learned a lot and so i think that everybody else that's going to be listening We'll certainly learned a lot after after this episode. So yeah, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. All right, one last great. trip down the rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah. One last one, trip one down last the rabbit trip. hole. Cheers, guys. All right, Cheers. gentlemen. Cheers. Want to close us out? Ah. As always, let it bleed.